Call first committee to order at 101 today. Let's bow our heads for the invocation. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for enabling us all to get here safely. We continue to be thankful for the, for the promises of the uh, resurrection which we observed yesterday. We continue to do so, and uh, we it's such a reassuring promise that you give us victory over death and is if we just only accept it. So we pray that you everything we say and do in our meeting today be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Roll call, Shelley, please. Yes, sir. Mike Dobbins. Here. Dora Petskowski. Here. Keith Austin. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Sean Crittenden. Here. Joe Deer. Here. Rex Jordan. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Daryl Legg. Here. Wes Nofire. On in. Joshua Sam. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Mobana Shot Pouch. Hi. E.O. Smith. Here. Condessa Teehee. Honey. Victoria Vasquez. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Shelley. Um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So, thank you. All those that approve. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Before we get into reports, <coughs> this past Thursday, I think a lot of us were present, and many uh, others, uh, perhaps a few were not, but uh, we had a very memorable groundbreaking last Thursday. Yeah of the hospital, and I just don't think we ought to just uh, kind of go on as business as usual because that's quite a memorable event. And I think in the last five, six years, there's been breathtaking progress on our health campus out there, starting with the outpatient clinic and then, of course, the medical school and this uh, kind of cherry on the top, the, the hospital. And so I thought after our reports, maybe at the announcements, portion of it. I may give each counselor, each member of the health committee a chance just to share some of your thoughts about the new hospital and what, what Cherokee health care means to your constituents. So uh, anyway, I thought I'd pass that. We'll move on to reports and we got Mr. George Valier here. George, thanks for coming. Little George. There, is that better? You have my report there in front of you. Um, we're still wearing masks at the hospital in Clamore. Rogers County is a high, has a high transmission rate, continues to still have a high transmission rate. Um, we still have the shot vaccination room going five days a week there in the hospital on the outpatient side. You can get tested in the drive through Monday through Friday. Um, if you notice on your report, the, uh, we've got two age groups, 30 through 39 and 50 through 59, both share the highest positivity rate. ER is slowly gaining traction. They're averaging about 100 patients a day. And one of the, we just hired a second infection control uh, per individual. So now we have two certified infection control folks and we're going, we're looking at how we can open up and start doing infection control training for some of the smaller sites and, and anybody that's, that's interested in getting their infection control people certified. So with that, I open it up to questions. Danny. <clears throat> Afternoon, George. They, these are pretty simple questions. Uh, as I read your report, what's the difference between denied and deferred? Denied is not paid for something that's already taken place, like an ER visit, and deferred is something that hasn't taken place. A, a doctor refers you out for an outpatient uh, visit, and it's it's deferred. It's not that's not paid. One is inpatient. The denied is the ER visit that's already taken place. Okay. All right. Uh, number number two. Do you guys carry the same? Uh, drug program is what the Cherokee Nation uh, handles the same type like like for example uh, you know uh, yeah, I don't know some, some type of a hyperactive drug or ADH drug or do you do you no. all do different drug formulas our drug formularies are different there's a, probably a lot of similarity there but they're not exactly the same so if if, if the Cherokee Nation did not carry one uh, 
and they come to you, they would be able to receive it from you guys, even though the nation doesn't doesn't particularly, if or we vice carry, versa. If we carry that, yes. If you carry that. Okay, and the last question, uh, do you all have the same dental procedures? For example, uh, you know, do you guys do crowns or not crowns, or, or do you, uh, you know, root canals and all these different things? Do you do the same thing as what the nation does, or no, are you sir. all different that way as well? No, sir. No, you're not. You we don't. don't. No, we don't have. We don't do the same things. You don't. You don't do the same thing. No. So if if a guy wanted to know what you did do, you guys have a. Do you have a sheet or something you could send us that would tell us what procedures you do take care of and what ones you don't? Yes, sir. I can get. The, I'll, I can get that for you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you, you sir. Bet. You bet. Okay. As a point, the other Cherokee Nation does provide crown procedures, uh, but the patient has to pay the laboratory bill mm -hmm. and after their uh, exam is such where they're decay free they don't do a crown on a tooth if they need to have five or six other procedures and we do endodontic procedures root canals uh, certainly in most cases right. um, so we do have a bit of expanded coverage versus uh, Claremore I think George is it in dental do you just do, you do fillings yes sir. is that on everybody adults and children correct mm -hmm. Okay. And routine extractions? Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for George? Uh, well, st sticking to dental, I guess, George, I don't want to pick on your dental department, but it says general dentist visits in-house on page one of your report. And then it says 199 outreach at Inola and Chelsea schools. Do you know what that outreach is? At the they go out and do sealants, sealants? and fluorides at uh, schools. Okay. I know the Cherokee Nation does or mm -hmm. did. Uh, I didn't know whether we're duplicating services there. Where the Cher no, we're trying. I've, I've asked that before, and they um, assured me that we're not going to the same schools. Okay. All right. Very good. Any other questions for George? Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you for your report, too. That's a thorough report. Cherokee Nation Health Services Director, Dr. Steve Jones. Good afternoon. Hope everybody had a good, relaxing Easter weekend. So um, you have my report in your packet. Um, I'll just make a few comments. Our groundbreaking was fantastic that we had on Thursday leading into the weekend, and Thank you all that attended. We appreciate your support and being there to support us on that. That's going to be a game changer for us. I think I mentioned it if you heard some of the things we talked about there. It's going to open up doors that, that we've not thought possible just a few short years ago um, with reference to our residencies, expanded services, expanded um, opportunities for uh, keeping more patients close to home, which is our goal, not to have to transport or transfer patients out and take them away from their families. So this is going to open up a lot of doors for us, and we appreciate the support from the council in allowing us to move that project forward. Uh, I did bring a guest with me, unless I, I can answer questions first before I introduce my guest. Is there any desire to do that? We want to do it after, after she speaks. Well, Dr. Jones, why don't we hang till after? Okay. So I did bring a guest okay. with me, as I said. Um, Ms. Uh, Jessica Lewandowski, she is the uh, patient experience manager for our new department, our, our new program called Patient Experience Team. Uh, I'm going to let her come up and talk about her program a little bit. I think it's going to help all of you around this table, especially our at-large counselors, but I think every single person here will, be, will benefit from her team and, and as we develop this program. Uh, we did start it off uh, with three individuals, her and two others, and then our plan is to expand this each year, so you'll see some additions in the next year's budget that we'll be putting in for next year. So I know that time's coming up pretty quickly as we start to plan for next year's budget. So without no further, I'm going to turn it over to Jessica and let her give her presentation there. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. Like Dr. Jones said, my name is Jessica Lewandowski, and I am the new Patient Experience Manager for Cherokee Nation Health Services. And before I begin my overview, I'd like to take a brief moment to thank you for your support of this initiative. I'm incredibly excited to have the opportunity to help improve access and experiences for all Cherokees within the healthcare sphere. 
As you all know, the Cherokee Nation Administration and Tribal Council approved funding for the patient experience team back in November. I assumed my role in February. And as of March 20th, our team is now fully staffed. Both of our new patient navigators, Chandler Romero and Stephanie Osborne, have previous experience within Cherokee Nation Health Services. And they've already done an excellent job of beginning to serve patients in this new capacity as well. Our team has two primary objectives that overarch all that we do. Those include to improve patient experience and satisfaction within Cherokee Nation Health Services, and also to increase access to health care for our at-large citizens. When discussing positive experiences and customers, or excuse me, positive experiences and satisfaction for any organization or industry, customer service plays a huge role. Even though our team is still very new, we have already started to work on some internal initiatives that are geared towards this. Some examples of these include customer service trainings, professional telephone etiquette guidelines, and surveys that'll help us identify specific opportunities for improvement moving forward. At the end of this month, my team and I will be going to visit the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, we will be meeting with their patient experience team and Mayo Clinic is world renowned for their customer service and patient experience. So I'm really excited to see how we can emulate some of their best practices back here at home. Our efforts are not just limited to within our health system. Our team attends outreach events uh, within the reservation and outside of the reservation so that we can share information with Cherokee citizens all over. As I mentioned earlier, one of our primary goals is to increase access to health care for at-large Cherokee citizens. Our team aims to ensure that no Cherokee ever has to feel alone when navigating the sometimes complex world of health care. We now have an email and phone line dedicated to providing assistance for Cherokees all over who have questions regarding health care access, um, and so they can reach out whether they're at-large or or within the reservation, and we'll provide that assistance to them. Additionally, our team now attends all of the at-large gatherings so that we can interact with a broader range of patients to identify their individual and collective needs. When corresponding with patients, we provide information about what CNHS programs and services are available to them. For at-large patients, this also includes providing guidance uh, that will help to create a seamless visit for those patients that are visiting from out of town. We do know that travel is not always possible for all of our at-large citizens, so we also collaborate with local tribal facilities so that they can know what options are available closer to them. And that pretty much summarizes our current initiatives. Of course, our team will continue to tailor our efforts so that we can best serve the Cherokee people as we move forward. Um, I brought some handouts that I'll give out after the meeting that include our contact information and please feel free to reach out anytime um, or refer patients to us. We would be more than happy to assist. And if anyone has any questions, I would be more than happy to answer. <clears throat> questions for Jessica. Julia? Hi, Jessica. Hello, how are you? <laughs> good. It's good to see you here. Me we've too. Uh, We've met several times and spent time at community meetings, at large meetings mm -hmm. recently. Yes. And I am, I am especially appreciative, I'm appreciative of a lot of what you do, all of what you do, but especially I like the handouts that you have been giving to people that are showing them what the local facilities are, the local uh, places where they can go. And I think that's going to be a, a great resource. And I, I would encourage that maybe if there are even state and federal non-Indian types of places that, that as we begin to grow that list, you know, that those kinds of places could be added to because I think that they're also important for people to just know in a real general sense about what the health options are in their specific locations. But you guys are doing a great job and, and to be identifying the tribal uh, facilities in other states and things like that. That's that's a lot of research and it's good research. And so just wanted to thank you very much because uh, your work has been needed for a long time and glad to see it coming to fruition. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much for the feedback. Any, 
and even on the reservation, I want to thank you for being at our uh, registration deal we had at the at the uh, prior area. Um, you know, I had a lot of feedback from people that that you just helped them navigate to where they needed to be, even though they're still on the reservation. So uh, that's that's outstanding. You know, that that takes a lot of pressure off us as counselors because uh, goodness, I don't know how anybody knows what goes on every day in the from one end of the tribe to the other. So it's very helpful for us, and thank you very much for that. It was, it's a great program. Thank you. Johnny? Uh, Jessica, thanks for being here today. I, I feel like I've uh, communicated with you more in the, like the last three weeks uh, than anyone else in my email list. I tell you, um, you've, Jessica's already been helpful with more than five, probably about eight or nine different people who, have, who have, I've, I've sent directly their path uh, that are that were either in Moore, Oklahoma, or California, or uh, you know Florida, uh, Kansas, right? All these different places that people uh, call in. And, and remember too that this is this is exactly what uh, the at-large citizens for sure ha had been clamoring about for a while. And not not that we can provide them something, uh, provide them health care, but we can help them out to find access to to, to whatever's locally. Um, and then help them if they need to come back, make, help them make that appointment uh, to, to get back. I mean, it's, I, I, I can't say enough how, how great this is and how it mimics, mirrors right in, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, as, as you were talking earlier about the new hospital and the groundbreaking, how all this is kind of folding in together right now, especially from my seat as an at-large counselor for, the, for those 300,000 or so that, uh, that I try my best to represent and, and Dr. Coates as well. It, uh, this is really coming together nicely. I truly appreciate it, and uh, I know we will be in constant contact. My, my one question would be, I know that you've been to the at-large uh, events uh, uh, recently. Do you, do you plan on having a team to continue doing that? Will they be in California and then, and then uh, so on uh, with us there? Yes, uh, we plan to attend all of the at-large gatherings. Um, like I said, our, I will be at most of them. I'll be on maternity leave for a brief time during the summer, but after that, um, or while during, I'm, while I'm going to be on leave, we'll have my team members there, but great. I plan to resume as soon as I'm back. Great, great. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. Uh, Jessica, I've just been, always been curious, in general, let's say the smaller tribal facilities in western Oklahoma, uh, can Cherokees receive care there? Is it very, fairly uneventful? Um, have you found in general that they are receptive? Typically for, um, it all depends on the agreement that the individual facility has with IHS um, to what, what scope. And mm -hmm. sometimes there are certain service lines within that facility that are limited to either just their tribal members or just people that live within a certain area. However, um, typically, most are able to receive just the basic in-house services at, at tribal facilities. However, like I said, it typically depends on, on the individual facility. And if there is um, a particular one in mind, I'd be happy to reach out to determine exactly what, what is available there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, are you able to uh, address or to tell Cherokees in particular, if they live, say, in Muskogee, and they have to receive inpatient care somewhere, they, they never understand why they have to depend on the Creek Nation or the Muskogee Nation for their services. You're prepared to handle that discussion. I'd be glad to take that off my plate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if, I'd be more than happy to assist and, and help clarify any yeah. um, questions or or anything that they may have. Okay, great. Because I've been answering that question for six years. Yeah. And it seems like seems like it's a moving target too. I just have to be up to date. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jessica. Sean, just real quick, I'd like to commend the at large council folks and the health staff. This is a great, great thing. <clears throat> you know, we all want to be communicated with, and we want to be communicated with with respect and and talk to. You know course like we matter and uh, I just anything that deals with communication the the great minds that put this together and the help that it's going to be for the at large and for for us folks here um, it's a good thing so appreciate you and the and the staff and at large council folks as 
That was a, that's a big one. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions for Jessica? Junior? So on our, our local clinics, if, if we have a constituent that's had a couple run-ins down there and can't get anything worked out, do they, we have them call you now, or, or what do we do? They can call us, and if they do live within the reservation, um, we will likely refer them to a patient advocate. Um, however, if they just have a basic question regarding, you know, what services are available or who to reach out to regarding a specific question, we can help them with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Appreciate it. Did anyone have any follow-up questions for Dr. Jones? Okay. She's going to hand these uh, handout cards out for you guys. Take a few of them and keep them with you and make some copies if you need to. Uh, it has all the contact information there for you. So um, to answer your question, yes, it, if someone is having trouble with access or something that they need to question on, Jessica and her team will be at point of contact. There's an email on there, and we are going to be monitoring those and, and trying to get that help where it's needed. Uh, as she said, this is about customer service. This is about uh, being available, communicating, and that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do here, open up those, those lanes of communication and, and uh, help patients because it's hard to navigate. It's hard to navigate a health system, even if you have the knowledge of, of how a health system works and um, as she said, they're going to be visiting Mayo Clinic. They are fantastic at, at patient communication and, and uh, navigation. So we feel like they're one of the best in the world. So we're going to go there and find out exactly the tricks of the trade and bring them back to Cherokee Nation. So. Great. Wes? Um, hey, Dr. Jones. I had a yeah. question about um, our detox contracts. Uh, I was brought to my attention, I think that all of them except for one have been expired and um, kind of some people brought to concerns about possibly that being overflowing our ICU beds to be at capacity to handling those detox clinics or uh, patients. Well, we don't detox in, inside of our system. That's something that we do refer patients to facilities to do that. Uh, we do have contracts with different facilities to take those patients. And to my knowledge, there's not been an access issue. So if there is, then you have an issue or you have some uh, knowledge of that, please get it to me and I will look into it. All right, I'll bring that to your attention after the meeting today. Appreciate it. Sure. Anything else for Danny? Dr. Jones, uh, I was noticing in your report that the, uh, we're, we've had an increase in the uh, third party revenue from last year to this year. So I, I was not familiar with the fact that, that we are actively seeking for folks to have either sign up for Medicare or, or to sign up for Sooner Care or these different things. Could you kind of give, give us maybe as a council and, and the folks an idea uh, of what you think? I, and I'm sure it's because we've got people signed up that we've had this third party increase in, on the, on the uh, third party revenue. If that question makes sense, I know I kind of danced a little bit there. but. So, so it's beneficial to have our patients have a third-party payer. Not that it's a cost to the patient, and we never want to burden the patient with cost, um, but those, that money is turned back into our system. So as we bill that third-party revenue, uh, if there's a deductible, that's waived or, or written off. If there's a copay, that's waived, written off. But, but that's a way a patient can help contribute to, the, um, to helping us expand our health care system. Uh, when we took when I took this job several years ago, I think we had around 46 percent of our patients uh, had a third party payer, and the rest were uninsured or had no payer. Uh, the last number I saw this last week, uh, I think it was last week, we're about 87 percent third party payer. Uh, now that goes to the efforts of our teams, our patient benefit coordinators, and things of that nature. We also had a, a Medicaid expansion that happened. Uh, that helped a lot of patients that were caught in that what they called the donut that they made too much money to get on uh, to have a third party they didn't make enough to to make the uh, marketplace so uh, they were kind of caught in this no man's land and Medicaid expansion helped close that gap so the one thing with the emergency um, um, COVID uh, act going away that's going to close some of those doors so we're advocating now and meeting with those patients or trying to make lists of those patients that that were benefiting from that expansion 
and we're contacting them and trying to help them find before they run out of, uh, of coverage. Um, it doesn't only benefit us. It benefits the health care of our whole state because uh, that patient doesn't have to use us even when we sign them up. They have the freedom of choice to go wherever they want to go once we sign them up. Uh, we're just trying to help them find services so if they are off somewhere and they need help, they have that access to care uh, and they're not going to be turned away. So uh, it is a, it is a, you know, it's a all members of the team working together uh, to make this happen and it's, it's uh, being proactive and identifying those things before they happen like this where we're going out and trying to help those patients that we're, are know are going to get uh, caught in this um, donut again or caught in this, this place where they can't get, get that third party. Are we going to turn them away? Absolutely not. They're still going to be eligible for services, but it does help us to expand when we are able to collect some revenue on the back end of it. Thank you. Yeah. Speaker. Hey, Dr. Jones. First of all, what well, is a big deal, 30-party revenue? I know a lot of ambulance services in cities lose a lot of money because they don't do what you're doing. And, you know, that's just uh, something that we can bring back in our system. Now, I, I like the way that, uh, you know, you look at our new hospital that's coming in this. You guys are being proactive. The new programs that we're going to have in our hospital that are going to benefit so many more patients than we could serve before, we are going in a good direction. We really are. And to, and to add something maybe that um, um, is a, another way as opposed to really for me, contract health is who I for kind of call for everything. I kind of dumped on contract health. But um, this will be another avenue too. Uh, it's just another tool for us that, man, that's, that's a big deal. And, and what you guys are being proactive in and doing a lot of things that's going to be beneficial for our for our citizens and it's going to make it easy for us to kind of navigate around to help them so just like to say thank you the groundbreaking was awesome man a ton of people there it, it was a great event so and just thank you for all that you're doing well thank you very much we couldn't do it without your support so we appreciate the support of council uh, before i let you go dr jones in our individual clinics are we still providing assistance, helping those sign up for the affordable care insurance. Absolutely. And, still there. And that's, that's one of the things that we mentioned, a lot of things, even with contract health, and, and you, you guys get these questions sometimes, too, about why do I have to meet with a patient benefit coordinator before we uh, send someone out with contract health. And the reason is we want to make sure we're maximizing the dollars you give us to use. So for every, the way contract health works is if someone has the ability to have a third-party payer, then, and let's say that fee is $100, but the third party will pick up 60 of it, then Contract Health only has to pick up 40 instead of the whole 100. So that allows us to use that other balance, that other $60, to help someone else. So we make that money go as far as we possibly can. So part of that, uh, especially in some services with optometry and things of that nature, they may have to meet with a patient benefit coordinator before the referral is finished. And that's just to ensure that we're making those dollars that you guys entrust us with go as far and serve as many people as we can. So. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Yeah, Thank welcome. you, Ms. Lewandowski. Thank you. Ms. Pivek. Thanks for coming, Lisa. Thank you, guys. Good afternoon. It's good to see you all again. Beautiful weather again this time. I think performance management customer satisfaction must be the theme of the day. You have my report in front of you, and one of the things that I wanted to highlight is starting uh, this week, I know that we had talked about that we were getting customer feedback through QR code, online, and paper surveys from anybody that we were interacting with in a couple of programs, and now we are doing that across all of our programs for the purpose of how can we improve the experience at any of our events, any of our activities, and for also guiding us into how we might uh, reshape those in the future. Maybe some unmet needs that we didn't know about. So I wanted to let you know if you have a citizen who says, I got asked to fill out something with a QR code at a race or at the WIC clinic. Um, that's pr particularly for us to figure out how we can do a better job at the work that we're doing. Um, a couple other things that I wanted to mention from the report. I want to, uh, there's an important deadline coming up on the 16th of April. It's for anybody that um, wants to apply for the summer EBT or the summer food benefits through WIC for school children. They need to get their applications in, and that is through the um, Gadoogie portal. They can go in and sign it up for their uh, benefits. That will close the 16th. Those benefits will go out once a month for three months for those students. 
Um, also, one of the things I wanted to mention is we just received funding from the National Association of City County Health Officials to develop a wastewater surveillance program within the Cherokee Nation, and we're going to be setting up the framework for that with this money, and we are already working closely with environmental services and um, Billy Hicks and that group, as well as Wayne Isaacs and Rosen Infrastructure, um, and in conjunction with the Man Killer Soap Water Act to do that in uh, do a partnership so that we can do that wastewater surveillance. And that's not just for uh, COVID, that's for other diseases as well, so that we'll be able to do that in a different way. And it actually is pretty, um, can tell you what's coming ahead of time before you actually see it showing up in your patients and your facilities and be able to share that information with health services. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention today is, um, if you'll notice on your report, we did, during the month of um, March, we did meet 132 speakers. We assisted 132 first language speakers and 415 phone calls and various, and the majority of that. If we're referring someone back, Health Services has a great network for us to refer back if they're looking or needing help in, in any of our health facilities. Otherwise, we also do other, also refer to housing, to water and sanitation, any of the other programs at Cherokee Nation, both inside and we're working with people outside of Cherokee Nation to see who we might refer um, a constituent or a citizen to if they have anything that they need. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for Lisa? Danny? Lisa, thank you for coming today. Um, when you, how do you pick your partners? When, when you partner for this public health stuff, do you go to the local YMCA's or the rec centers, or, or do you stay just within the Cherokee Nation? Most of the time we stay within the reservation, and our first order of business is any Cherokee community organizations first to partner with. If we can partner with the Cherokee community organization, we want to do that first. And for most of the partnerships that we develop, such as the Wings Races, we look to those Cherokee community organizations first. But we also have um, just willing partners throughout different areas, and it depends on the area if who wants to develop a particular partnership and what that partnership is uh, geared to do as well. Well, yeah, because I, I noticed, you know, we don't, across the reservation, we don't all have wellness centers. So I just didn't know whether you partnered with the ones that are not. And when you do partner with them, do you do you pay and monitor for these programs, or is this something that's, that's left on the own? We, if you're asking if we pay for individual gym memberships or citizenships or? No, well, like you're, you've got, uh, I don't know, trying to get off the, the tobacco, the, the skull yes, and the different cessation. things. I noticed in your report you've got these new programs that you're coming out with this spring and this summer. Uh, do you, does Cherokee Nation itself pay for that or does, or, or it, when you partner with them or, or do they, are you, do we just put it in there and kind of let them? No, we, we take care, we pay for that in the programs that are going on. We will take care of those. Like if, if for instance, if there is a partner who wants to do an in-person smoking cessation event or they want to do classes, we'll take care of the cost for those classes in that partnership. Uh, one of those partnerships that's very common for smoking cessation or in business and industry want to do them at a work site or uh, different community groups, and we take care of the cost of that, yes, if that's what you're... Yeah, yeah, like, okay. I know in my area we've got Hope Coalition. Correct. And, and you partner with them on their, their uh, 5K runs they have and their different things where they go out with the vaping and the different things at school. So Correct. when you do partner with them, do you fund that or is that, is that do you help with the cost of that or what? That, I guess that's what I'm trying Correct. to find. Correct. So if we, if we partner with them for a 5K, we cover the cost of the entire 5K. And then what we do is we partner with them. And for any person that joint, that wants to come to that 5K that's not a WINGS member, and there are, amazingly enough, quite a few that will show up to that, any revenue that's made from that goes back to the Hope Coalition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Julia? Hi. Hi. Uh, I had a conversation with you several months ago about internships. And um, can you refresh my memory about this are you do you have internships uh typically during the summer or things like that for students and yes others? so we have there's a couple of ways one first thing i'll preface it by is i do know that there are some uh, avenues going forward for internships across cherokee nation and different programs and we have utilized some of that but what we do have is depending on what the internship uh, might be around we usually do most of the time at our graduate students or students that are needing to get their uh, experience for their college degrees and we do all we need to do in those circumstances is we do 
agreements with the universities or the schools or whomever for them to come on site. Or some of them we've actually done remote. We've done remote interns off site like that as well. And we're looking for those. We've just done um, a couple of uh, pieces of work also with the National Association of City County Health Officials to obtain some students in epidemiology to do internships and work for us. So. And so where would they begin with um, an application? Online at Cherokee? The first thing, yeah, we don't have an online application right now, but reaching out to me is usually what I, if somebody reaches out to me, I'm able to gear them or push them into the direction they need to go until there's the more formal um, internship program that I think is being developed broadly across the Cherokee Nation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions for Lisa? I see none. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay. That's all of our reports. Old business, none pending. New business, none pending. Announcements, as I mentioned before the meeting, I thought we would give each of you an opportunity to just kind of express this new hospital that we broke ground on. It's a monumental a moment in our Cherokee Nation history, particularly our health care. So I just give every counselor a chance, a moment or two, if you just want to express what that facility means, what it means to your constituents, what Cherokee health care means to your constituents. I just thought it would be appropriate to at least share with one another what it means. Anyone? Joe? Yeah, I'll go first. I was actually out of town that attended NCAI. But I did get a lot of calls, and the feedback shows that our tribe is growing. Mm -hmm right now and with the health growing and being able to supply as many citizens around here that we can our people in district 13 are very appreciative in looking at where we're going forward not just with the hospital but in health in general and working with our clinics and like me and Kidwell butt up to each other so the programs that they have that can help our at-large citizens is growing too and I know I've talked to Councillor Kidwell and Coates that the things that are growing in health are going to help not just the people in district, but the whole Cherokee citizens. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I, I, I like the growth and the, the way that our tribe is growing. And I think health is obviously a top priority, and it shows with this, with this hospital and the services it's going to be able to provide. Thank so thank you. Sean? I think Rex was for me, but I'll be oh, quick. Okay. Now, Rex down there hiding. It's a, what looking at. It's it's everybody's platform for everybody with any common sense at all. Health, uh, it's everybody's, or it should be. And here we go. I can't imagine a a uh, a bigger bigger thing than we could be working on than what's going to happen here here before too long. Not to mention the the <coughs> clinic, the beautiful clinic we already have. So. Wow, what a what a blessing to be just a small small part of this and be able to see it see it going on. It's going to be history, and it's going to take care of lots of Cherokee people. Um, so, great work, great work. Thank you, Danny. Let's see, and then Rex, you're next after that. Well, this is going to be a game changer for the people that I represent with the new clinic that we already have and the new hospital is going to double the size the number of beds and with the specialty units especially the heart unit I think that's going to be great for the people thank you Rex Danny did you well when you're 165 years old like I am and you've used Cherokee Nation and IHS Health since 1980 when I got off my dad's insurance and got out on my own being a public educator we didn't always have health insurance so I have been at Hastings I have had my my kids at Hastings and Claremore and and my grandkids and my daughters and my, my son so uh, uh, as everyone has said for a guy and I still use the AMO clinic at Salina and and I use each and every one of these these uh, services that's offered to me and I can't say enough I have, you know, when you've been in it 40 some years, you understand the, you know, the progression that we've done. And, and uh, this, is, this is a game changer for not only me, but for generations of Cherokees to come down the road that they're going to have a place to where they can go get top notch, top notch, you know, health care. And, uh, you know, I, I sit in a duck blind every once in a while. And I was in there with a doctor from, Tal from uh, Tulsa 
And I've told Dr. Jones this, and he's made the statement that within the next 10 or 15 years, that everybody across the United States is going to model their health care system after the Cherokee Nation for the way that we've progressed and the way that we've done. So it makes me proud to be a Cherokee. It makes me proud to be able to come somewhere to do this with and, and uh, for the men and women that work for the Cherokee Nation health deal. Uh, you know, my hat's off to each and every one of them, and I, I thank them, so, you know, utmost for what I, they've done for me. So there you go. Thank you. Keith. You know, the, the uh, facility is not just about health care. It's about culture. Uh, the uh, keeping families at home to care for their own people. Uh, historically, our people would go to the facility, whether here or Clamore, and if it's something serious, they get sent someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, that place is, uh, is nowhere close to where the family is. It's nowhere close to home is. It's nowhere close to where the folks and their family work. So uh, uh, it really is a burden on their family when that happens. So the more that we can care for people in our communities, it, it simply is a respect of our people. And uh, I really appreciate that part of it. It also means that those, those uh, uh, expenses those families would be uh, uh, subject to aren't happening because of it. So every, every day that we can keep people in their community rather than shipping them to Tulsa or to Fort Smith or wherever is, uh, is better for the families. It's simply a better, and you get better health outcomes because of it. Uh, when you have uh, the expanded services that we're going to be able to provide as well within our facilities means that it's going to be good for every Cherokee citizen. Those at-large citizens who rely on us, uh, it, it will allow us more things that we can do for those as well. So uh, it's, it's going to be good for every Cherokee citizen. Thank you, Keith. I think a lot of those aspects are overlooked. I appreciate you sharing those. Uh, Dora, did you, did you got something, Junior? Yes, um, it was a monumental experience to be there for the groundbreaking. I appreciate that opportunity. And although my district is a little further away, um, I have really had a lot of positive response from our citizens there. And I'm, I'm just excited to be a part of all of this. And, and um, I appreciate all the efforts that have gone into it. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. Junior. Well, I agree with everything that's been said. And, and you know, it, it's, it's unreal. But uh, one of the things I think we're overlooking, I mean, I hadn't mentioned it, is all the jobs that we're going to have that people are going to get to, you know, we're going to have to come up some people to do it, but we can do it. But think how many jobs and what it's going to do for the Northeastern Oklahoma, keep that money in here and let it turn over seven times and everything. But the biggest excitement that I get from my people, and I'm sure Daryl catches it every day too, is we're so excited, not about the hospital with the big beds and all, everybody loves that, but what going to be replaced over at Hastings. Yeah. That's it's got all the people in Sequoia County excited is, is that we can keep these kids home, not have to send them off and everything, we keep them there and because we get these calls every day about, hey, we got to get, we got to get Johnny in his treatment. We got to get throwing it. And by doing that, I think that that, that excites me too because I see it so much more. I mean, the hospital is great. I know we're doing great with our hospital and I'm so proud of it. And everything, but the follow-up on that is is going to be the big big payoff in my my deal. I know we're going to take care of our people, but now we're going to be able to help them more in a better direction. And and right. I just see that so much that it, it's just really excites me. And I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andessa. I appreciate all the words everyone has shared so far. And one of the things I want to point out is that um, one of the first things people learn how to say in Cherokee is, are you well? Tohijin. That's literally what that question means, are you well? And wellness not only reflects, it's also, it can, uh, that word tohi can be used to uh, refer to a state of peace. So when you're well, you're in peace. Your soul is in peace. Um, as the daughter of a retired LPN, um, seeing the struggles that Cherokee Nation Health Systems has worked through, has been through, um, the way that services have been increased, and the quality of services have vastly improved from when I was a child born into an Indian Health Service facility. 
Um, being at that groundbreaking was an incredibly heartwarming event to see everyone coming together and the level of excitement that is felt in our community for not just the health care services, but also for the health care workers who are going to fill that facility. I, I know that this is going to be an incredible recruitment tool for bringing the best and the brightest doctors who are also Cherokees um, into Cherokee Nation Health Systems, and, and I really look forward to the levels of improvement. As, as we look to the Families or Sacred Summit, which is taking place next week, one of the key aspects there is community health and health care. And, and thinking about the, uh, the NICU unit that is going to be a part of the new, new health care facility is incredibly important. I've had so many constituents reach out to me and talk about the incredible burden that is being placed on their families having to commute back and forth between Tulsa to take care of a critically ill um, newborn. So, so I think that it, it's hard to overstate the incredible impact that the new health facility is going to have. And it's so wonderful to work with people here on council and in our administration who understand the value, the incredible value and importance of, of wellness, of what it is to bring tohi to our people. And so I just say, thank you to everybody. I, I really appreciate everybody and everyone's work on, on this, this particular issue. Well done. Mike? Sitting here listening to each, each one of you have spoken uh, really puts in perspective on how we look at our districts and, and what's important. Um, I agree with every single thing that's been said. Um, you all are you passionate about how you feel. Um, and when you look at our health care system, uh, Candessa's right. From where it was, I mean, that's where I went to Hastings when I was little. Both my boys were born there. And we're doubling the capacity of that. And if you look back just a few years earlier um, when that pandemic hit, and there was not a bed in the state of Oklahoma in any hospital. They were all full. And my best friend's an ER doctor in Washington Regional. They were the same way. They had people in hallways. It was just horrible. And you know, I know it wasn't built for this, but if, if you look at if something does happen like that, you know, we've more than doubled the capacity of one of our facilities. So hopefully we can take better care of, of more of our citizens if something horrible does like happen like that again. Well, that just makes our capacity that much greater to serve. So all of these things that have been said today are true. And you know, and that's, that's how big of a deal this really is if you think about it, because it's, it encompasses so much you know, for our people. Um, I, I couldn't think, Dr. Jones, like I said, I couldn't think of a better uh, better thing to happen to our health care system. You know, we, we have a, a place where we train people to be doctors and we can bring them back in our own facilities. I mean, we're going to be self-sufficient one day, hopefully. You know, so I, I think we have a lot uh, to be thankful for. We are blessed. And, and I would like to thank you all for the work that you do in your districts because you, you represent your people well. That's all I got. Go ahead. I think it's a, 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 an amazing opportunity. Um, when I came on council, well, I'll back up, I, I, like everybody else here, I think we've all visited our health systems at one point in time, especially years back when there wasn't much space there. And I remember going in as a boy, you'd wait all day. Uh, you did see a doctor, and uh, it was the ER side just had, I think it was three on each side, and they're just bed curtain sheets that pulled by. You'd go in there and you'd see your doctor. And so, it's nice to see that the facilities are growing. Um, it makes uh, the idea that we're getting better health care systems uh, in place, and a lot of my constituents see that. Uh, when coming on a council in 2019, we had a new health care clinic open. Um, and, you know, it, it took a while to start getting things going there. I mean, it was a new facility, and it, it takes a while to build uh, the kind of uh, doctor and nurse base that you need to cover as many uh, patients that we're having to serve. So uh, like many of them and that I talk to and speak on their behalf, 
I constantly tell them, just, just give us time. We'll, we'll, we'll get this thing under control, uh, but a, a new hospital is something that we can really utilize under the right circumstances to benefit everybody. And so and that's not just having to, like uh, Councillor Callison said, send somebody to Tulsa or Oklahoma City in a long drive away. And, and I get those phone calls too where they're wondering the referral contract, they have to see a doctor as a specialty. So hopefully uh, we're able to, to revamp and revitalize our, our health care system under this new hospital to where we're bringing those special providing doctors here. And I think that's what they're excited about is seeing that as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's going to be, it's going to be, it could be an awesome thing. So sure. appreciate it. Okay. Melbourne. to buy that land back there and back then I was kind of resistant to okay of you know buying that land it was like why well, you want to hills and rocks and trees I mean what's going to become of but when I was sitting there looking and saw the uh the doctor's building now a new hospital and I said I'm sorry Don Crinton yeah. <laughs> that I resisted <laughs> when the vines come and I can see where the health, you know, care has come not only, you know, this area, but throughout our district, you know, the new clinics and stuff that's gone up, you know, that's got to be a growth, a bigger place somewhere. And, it, and I just, I can think of few, you know, that was really advocate about, you know, getting uh, there where we where we at today. But I am so thankful, you know, during the COVID, it was, it was pretty rough, you know, t even trying to get somebody there and then it, they didn't. I had quite a few people that had to be sent even as far as Little Rock, Fort Smith, you know, uh, even relatives uh, uh, then. So, you know, with a bigger hospital, maybe, you know, we'll be more apt to keep our people here. And I just want to thank the staff and everybody and even the council. You know, we had a part, you know, getting this done. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else? Well... I know six short years ago, if we were to go out on that property, it'd just be a pasture. And now we have a, a new outpatient clinic, joint venture with IHS. That was, it's 450,000 square foot. And we built a new medical school. To me, to, that's the most mind-blowing thing, is we have a medical school in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And I hear, I, I've been privileged to help medical students uh, for the last 25, 30 years, and I get calls. They're inquiring about the possibility of coming back here to, to do their graduate training. So the word's out. And uh, it's just changed so much in six years, new medical school and now the, the new hospital. It's just uh, it's really kind of hard to comprehend. And on a personal note, in 79, I did a summer internship at Hastings, a dental internship, and uh, had four chairs, one doctor, how many chairs we got in Tahlequah, Dr. Jones? Thirty-four chairs, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was a very intimate setting with one doctor, one restroom for all eight of us, and uh, so that's how far we've come. That, that was at the old old Hastings Hospital down there, so it's. A lot has happened, but I, c I could say we've had leadership involved where we've made this all happen in a really a compressed time, six years or so. Leadership that was uh, had, a, had a vision and, uh, and things have aligned, and here we are. But I thought we just need to mention it and have a share with one another our thoughts on this, you might say, monumental groundbreaking that happened Thursday. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, no more announcements. Uh, looks like the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Monday, May 15th at 1. Need one more motion. Set. All those in favor? All right. We're adjourned.